When I was first tasked of designing and making a website, I was presented with a blank canvas and had no idea how to begin. Everything on the page seemed off and nothing I was doing seemed to work. What made this harder is that I would try to design and develop the website at the same time as I was making it, instead of designing the site in a program like Illustrator or Figma, or even doing a simple wireframe. It wasn't until I started to dissect website layouts down to some basic principles and rules to make creating them a lot easier. So in this video, I want to show you those basic principles and guidelines to follow to enable you to create layouts a lot easier. However, this is not a web design tutorial. This is specifically a layout tutorial. I'm not going to talk about what font pairing is best, what button styles go best with what, this is just about layouts, which is why most of the graphics in this video will be wireframes with some website screenshots in between. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to lay out your own pages and understand what makes a layout good versus bad. First, we'll look at some basic principles of laying out a page, followed by laying out some sections to use, and then we'll actually pretend a client gave us some content and we have to lay out a website with it. With that being said, let's jump into the first principle to keep in mind when laying out a page, which is that every page is made up of rows, and each row is a separate idea. This simple principle personally made making website layouts so much easier to make and understand. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Check out this website. This is ecal.ca, a nonprofit website I made. If you look at it in terms of rows, the layout becomes very clearly made up of smaller parts the rows. There's distinctly a hero row, an about row, an events in news row, a stats row, and so on. Each row is a different idea pulled from the content, which means there should never be a single row that contains two different types of ideas in it. If you do, this will easily confuse the user and make for a poorer user experience. One thing that you may have noticed about the design is that each row is also made visually distinct. This one has a background image, this one has a white background, this one has a gray background, blue, white, and so on. The background for these rows should never be the same twice in a row. If you do, the design won't look right and it will make for a poor user experience. You can also have rows that have multiple rows inside them like this, but this only works if the content is related. It's not about separating the rows, more, it's about separating the ideas. Now, if you're working on a website with a typical color scheme, which is light colored rather than a dark mode style, then you can get away with having a solid white color row and with a slight gray one. If it were dark mode, then you use a dark gray instead. I personally like to use the hex value F7, F7, F7 for my light gray, but it's up to you and your design. Then of course, there are always background images you can use for rows. And lastly, I like to use the primary colors of the website's color scheme for other rows as well. With just these different styles of rows, you're set to creating interesting and distinct looking rows. The idea here is to just make the sections visually distinct. You don't need to have a different background style for each row, but as long as they're visually distinct and look separate in some way, then that's all you need. Another design related thing to keep in mind for rows is that each row should have some vertical padding on it. I use anywhere from 50 to 80 pixels for mine, but it's up to your design for the exact amount. Having this padding will make the layout look a whole lot cleaner and a whole lot more readable. It's important I mention this because I see a lot of people not doing this, or having way too little vertical padding. The last important thing you need to know about laying out a website is that you'll need the content first. If you want to make a layout good, you should never try to start with the layout and then later fit content into it. Instead, you should be taking the content and using the right layout for that content. This is an important part to realize because when designing a proper website, content should always come first and the design should reflect that. Now, with those principles and guidelines out of the way, let's start creating some layouts and sections. Here's a hero section, a two column image in text, a two-column text row, a three-column text row, a two-column image row, a single-column large text row, a call-to-action row, and these other two we'll talk about later. 
Now, this is by no means all the layouts you can come up with, but this is just a few I'm going to lay out for this video. In fact, if you go to Pinterest and type in web design page blocks, you can find some more that includes ones for like testimonials and galleries. You could actually take this further by preparing some page elements too, but considering this video is more about beginner level, I'm not going to go that in depth. Now let's pretend our client gave us this content and let's start working with it. This client of ours is probably some typical business like a lawyer, plumber, or builder. We have the content for the home page, an about page, the service page, and a contact page. We also have a dump of random images the client provided us to use throughout the website. Not every client will have documents laid out in such a way, but this is actually a typical way to see them outlined for the average brick and mortar business. Most of the time, you will be basically getting what you see from clients. A wall of text with some headings in between. I actually personally like this because it gives me full creative freedom to lay out the content and use it in whatever way I want. Now that you have the content, it's up to you to determine what kind of layout works best with that content provided. Each part of the content will work better with a certain layout over another. Let's start with the homepage. I already did a video on what I think the best homepage layout should be, supported by user experience, which I'll link in the description. But considering we have content here, we can make a new custom layout to reflect it. I know I said that the content would determine the layout, but there are also some web design trends that you should be following to create layouts familiar and that promote good user experience. One of those trends is a hero section. This is the first row on the home page with a big background image, a heading, a paragraph, and a button. I recommend this layout for nine out of 10 home pages. It just works, it's informative, concise, and gets clicks. It's also common, which means it's familiar, which is great for user experience. Now, just because the content we have here doesn't specifically outline content for the hero section, this doesn't mean you shouldn't make it. Nine out of 10 times, this is actually something I have to end up pulling from the other content to create. The typical hero section is just a heading, paragraph, and button, so it wouldn't be that hard to extract the content we need just to make this row. So let's start with the hero section. For the hero section row, we're of course gonna start with the background image style. I'll add in the row with the content inside it to complete it. And here's our first row done. Now let's look at the content again to see what kind of layout we should have next. Now it should be pretty obvious what content in the document should be divided into rows. I can see right away we can split up this section, this one, this, 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 and lastly this one. For our next section, it looks like we have a heading with a chunk of text. Let's browse through our layouts to see which one would fit best. I think this one would fit best. If we just paired it up with an image, we can use it for our second row. Another smaller rule to follow about laying out websites is that you should avoid walls of text. This is why I chose the layout with an image to avoid this. People tend to be quite visual, so I like to add in an image wherever I can. And images also add value to a page, so that's a bonus. Next up is these three sets of headings and paragraphs. The obvious choice for this layout would be the three column layout. This one will work great, no images needed. However, there is a small problem with it. It just jumps straight into the content. Most sections should have some sort of heading to describe what the section is about. And based on the wireframe, we don't have this, so we'll have to add in a heading ourselves. There we go, much better. Now this section's content can be easily scanned and has a purpose to it. For this row, I will also make it have the light gray background to differentiate it from the rows above and below it. Looking back at the content, we'll actually add in these next two sections at once. The size of the paragraph seems ideal for another two column layout with an image and text, so we'll use that one again. And again, we want to use images because they add more interest and value to the page. But because there's two of them, we can just swap the columns on the second row to mix it up and have a more interesting layout. Now for the background, I would keep them both white. I realize I'm looking at just lines here, but I would imagine this content is related in some way. If you wanted to consider these two sections unrelated and therefore wanted to make them separate, you could use a layout like this. It's similar to the first one, but it uses a full width container. So the image spans the entire section 
and it will naturally look differentiated, so you don't need to add a background. Though if you wanted to, you could. Next up is this basic wall of text. For this, I will use a two column text layout. I'm not gonna use an image for this one because we've already used images for the other ones and I think we could get away with just having text. Because it's a simple row, I also think we can get away with having a solid color background. Back to the content, we can use this last little bit for a call to action. For this row, we'll use the image background. This works well for an absence of an image used for the row above, so there isn't an overwhelming amount of images going on. And there we have it. We use the home content to create a layout for the home page. Now, not every client will provide you with a lot of content for the home page, as my example client did. If they didn't, then it would be up to you to put some content together from the other pages, like the about page, to be able to build an effective homepage layout. So that's the home page. Let's move on to the about page and see what we can do. In the effort to make this more realistic, when it comes to about pages, I find clients usually don't provide that much content. It's usually much easier for a client to talk about their services than it is themselves, which usually reflects in the content. So to keep the theme, our about page content doesn't have much, just two paragraphs with headings. However, this is our first sub page, so we have to approach it a little bit different. When I lay out sub pages, I always find that there should be a consistent title section. In my opinion, for user experience, the title section on sub pages should always be shorter than the height of the home page hero section. This subconsciously gives the user the impression that they are on a sub page just from this, which improves user experience. The title row should have the name of the page possibly with a paragraph, and it should be a background image style row. I'll include the paragraph in the title row by extracting it from the content of the page. This paragraph should summarize what the entire page is about. It shouldn't be more than one to three sentences. Then for the content, I'll use an image in text row, followed by another one, but swapped around again. Then what I like to do on sub pages is create a call to action section at the bottom to help for conversions. Considering there's already one on the home page, I could just copy and paste this for this page. Next, for the service page. First, the same title section as the about page, and then, looking at the content, we have one large paragraph to deal with next. Now that this paragraph appears a bit bigger than the previous ones we worked with, I don't think the two-column image in text layout will work. Instead, we'll use the basic two-column text layout, once again, the content didn't appear to have a heading, so I'll have to add in one of my own. For this layout, I'll include it above both of the paragraphs. Next is what probably would be the content for the individual services. I will use the layout we mentioned before for this one, the full width image and text layout. There's three sets of content for this one in the doc, so we can alternate the layouts so it looks more interesting. Finally, I will end the page with another call to action leading to the contact page. And now for the contact page. This one won't take long, as clients typically don't add too much content for this page. I'll just add the title section, and because there isn't too much text content, I can use a style that makes the text more impactful. So I will use the single column large text row style, followed by what will probably be just a contact form, which isn't important for the video. And there you have it four pages laid out based on the client's content. One thing you may have noticed from laying out the pages is that I didn't exactly translate the content outlined into rows. I had to come up with my own elements, like the hero section, some headings, and the call to actions. This is common practice to do. Client content may and probably will require some additions to be able to turn it into effective layouts. It's no fault of the client as they typically aren't thinking about their content in terms of layout, but as a web designer, it's something that you'll have to think about and know when to do. You're basically taking their content and expanding off of it when you need to. You're definitely not going as far as writing up your own paragraphs, but adding in an extra heading or two or a call to action sentence goes a long way to creating an effective layout, an effective page, and overall an effective website. So don't be afraid to come up with your own content if it'll make the site better. And that's it. I hope you learned something or found this video entertaining. If you want to become a better web developer or designer, check out my other videos.